everywhere are sounds. If we, all of us in the room, try to be really quiet, there will still be sounds. The chair will make some noise, someone will cough. <laughs> we will hear new sounds, like the buzzing fans. You hear the fans? If it could be even more quiet, we might hear our own heartbeat, or the blood running through our veins, or even the sound of, of growing beard. I don't know, the thing is that we live on a planet where we breathe air, so quiet simply doesn't exist, which I'm very happy for. Today, there are more people living in cities than in the countryside. In about 30 years, 70% of Earth's population will live in cities. Most people won't grow up hearing the sound of the wind blowing in the trees or the sound of an ocean. Some of us will never hear the sound of a real ocean. Today, we grew up with other sounds. Sounds of traffic, cars, trains, artificial sounds, mechanical sounds. Traditionally, we think that natural sounds are beautiful and artificial sounds are ugly. But how about the next generation? Will they be nostalgic when they think back about the roaring city traffic of today after all a car became electric? Will today's urban noise bring sweet memories to the next generation? Maybe the sound of the forest will make them freak out. <laughs> the sounds that come with our way of living can make us stressed, nervous, but also inspired and happy, and we're going to show you how in a little bit. If you travel with the underground in Stockholm, where I come from, the sound of the squeaking brakes of the train, it, they cut through your bones. It sounds terrible, and people stick fingers in their ears. Because they listen with their irritable urban ears. At the same time, people go to concerts with contemporary music, and it sounds much worse. <laughs> and they pay to go there, right? But now they listen with the music ears, and that's a big difference. If you listen to the sound as if it was music, you will find the sounds around you that they are interesting, they have a lot of dynamic, depth, there are a lot of details, like very well composed music, right? So next time when you take a ride with underground or with a bus, Close your eyes and listen to this interesting piece of contemporary music where each stop is a verse or a movement and the whole, whole ride is, um, is like a symphony. I mean, there, there are various ways to reduce urban noise with uh, quiet asphalt, different sound-absorbing materials. You can dig down train tunnels, which is was very good and it's very necessary, but also very, very expensive. To change your way of listening, to listen to the sounds around you as if it was music, that's for free. But I must admit that even I, and I like sound a lot, I can also get annoyed at the sounds around me. So I've been dreaming of a, of a tool where you could take any sound and magically transform it into music in no time. And imagine if you could play with the sounds like a child is playing with the Lego. Then, then you can really become friends with, with, with all sounds. Ugly and beautiful. In the 80s, I discovered a band uh, that really blew me away. I really love their records. Uh, and it wasn't because of their melodies or because of their lyrics, but because the way they incorporated sound in, in their music. And when, um, when I took the decision not to get a real job, but instead become a music producer, um, it was very much thanks to this band. The band is called Yellow, and um, some years ago I met my hero, the musical genius of Yellow, which is 
Mr. Boris Blank. <laughs> Thank you, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your compliment first, Hokan. Thank you. Um, uh, let me say that uh, I'm having a similar um, affinity to sounds and all kind of noises which occur on this planet. And uh, I remember when I was a, a very small kid, I was in the mountains of Switzerland and I just played around with the echoes from the rock walls coming back, so I couldn't stop shouting at the walls and waited for the beautiful echoes coming back from far, from close. And um, later on I started to experiment, uh, experiment with sounds and uh, uh, all uh, kind of different noises, which on a recording tape, which on a uh, kind of a audio tape, then I cut the tape in two slices and each slice the same length and I paste them together in a different running order and play it as a whole loop back over the tone heads and mostly I was uh, quite surprised myself about the results coming out and that was like um, the last century, the last uh, century like uh, uh, late 70s uh, uh, in the last century, I'm sorry, uh, almost 40 years ago. So, uh, almost 40 years later, 2011, I met this gentleman right next to me, Hokan Litbo, and we are talking about new technology in music instruments. And um, I told him a long awaited dream I had, and the dream I had was, of course, a sampling uh, machine including a step sequence where you can um, place on each step, on each note, a different effect. And Hockan seems to be quite inspired by the idea. And that was the first initial spark for our collaboration ship, building this instrument uh, with the name Yellowfire. And I would like to show you some of uh, the functions of the Yellowfire, which is very very easy to show because each child can play with it. So first you go on the record page here. So you see uh, eight different colors, each color for a different sound. And uh, I like because I don't have the possibility to be outside and record some trains or some ugly cars uh, and, and motorcycles driving around. So I have to do it with my mouth and I give my best to give you an idea how it works. I guess the microphone is on this side, so... Do, wa, pi, yeah. Pow, Now you see you have slices each color. Now you can move the slices towards the start of the sound, to the, the transients of the sound, and now already it's, it looks like very good, so... Do, wa, pi, yeah. Pow, now, we're going to change it to the page um, where you can edit everything. So, you start to just hear. So now, you can add uh, like some more sounds like. And now, if you, if you see here, you can move this and make a, a kind of a delay. If you move it, to uh, to the right uh, to the left side it's a longer delay do, what, do, what, do, or what, do, what, do, what, do, what, do, or you can make what, it with do, what, do, what, do, what, do, or what, do, what, do what do or you can there is um, let me let me run through this this please <laughs> i would like to show you some more details just do. listen to what do what what comes next yeah do what do what do what do what 
So I would say you can make, uh, within a fraction of a minute, you can make a whole song. And I think what's very important is that this uh, tool, this uh, uh, instrument, is like a fingerprint when your colleague in San Francisco or uh, somebody else in Nigeria make the same noises like uh, we uh, are going to create here. It always sounds different. It's like a fingerprint. So. Uh, of course, you can make some whole songs, and what's very important is you can share uh, these uh, ideas, you can share this song to a colleague which has the same uh, instrument, and she, he can uh, send back to you what he has done with it, or you can also uh, send the whole song by, uh, by SoundCloud or whatever to a colleague or to, to a, a, a media social platform. And, um, as you can see, um, you can make music with anything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, what Boris said, how difficult it was to cut and put those tapes together in order to make a loop. That obviously took a very long time how the de development has changed from that time where music equipment was expensive, very big and very difficult to handle to something that is this small, that is super creative, that fits into your pocket and it costs less than a cup of coffee. So uh, the development is going very, very fast. The Yellow Fire could be handled and played by a three-year-old, which is uh, great. When we um, designed the Yellow Fire, we wanted to look like music, which of course is very difficult because music is invisible, right? But we want to look like creativity, like imagination, and definitely not like any physical music instrument. Uh, with this instrument, you, you, um, you play with music by uh, moving colored blocks, moving and twisting colored blocks. So it's a very different way to make music, and that's what it's all about. Not only play music, but play with music. Because music should be for everyone, not for some selected <laughs> composers or pop stars or uh, people with uh, knowledge or experience or even musical talents. It should be for everyone. And with the right ears and with some help, Yellow Fire maybe, anything becomes music. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. 